So about a week ago, a client brought me this computer to take a look at. It's an all-in-one HP TouchSmart 23-inch screen. And what's happening is, when you power it on, there's an error that says, no boot disk has been detected or the disk has failed. And what this normally means is that the drive has failed, the hard drive in the computer. So what I did was, I powered it down and uh, got into it. I'm going to go ahead and take it back apart. So each all-in-one desktop computer will come apart differently. Um, this one was one of the easier ones I've come across. Um, it's really just three screws holding it uh, together and the entire back comes off. One screw under here, and the screws are captive, they don't actually come out on this computer. They just stay with the back, so that pretty well pops it out. It's a very nice design. So then you got to come and get it the rest of the way. That side was still a little bit caught. Just gonna set the back down there. All right. So this is the hard drive. Now what I did is I took the drive out, which I'll go ahead and do. And it's held in by a captive screw there, and it kind of slides to the left. So I took the drive out, I connected it to my diagnostic computer. The drive just came up and worked. I was able to see all the files. I ran a complete diagnostic on the hard drive and it passed. So I went back and I looked and I didn't notice this before, but there is a burn spot right there just underneath where the data and power cables connect. If I turn it over, this should show up on the camera it's burnt here. So what happened is a short between the two of the, the power pins happened and it burnt the connector. So that is the reason the drive wasn't detected. So what I've done is I've ordered a replacement which is right here. So I'll just be uh, putting that in. Let's see. What I'm needing to do is to get to the motherboard where this is connected so I can replace it. So there are several screws. Let's see. Actually, I believe there's three screws that are needing to come out. And these screws are not captive. They actually do come out. So three screws and... This should now come off. Okay. So that is the motherboard. Set that down there. All right. I will hold down on the little retention clip and pull up. And I had already disconnected the power side, um, which goes right there. So that's the, uh, the failed one. Replace it with the new one. Now there's a slight possibility, I'm a little bit worried about this, that the issue was caused by an over voltage coming from the motherboard. I kind of doubt that. I think more than likely this uh, one that failed, it was just a manufacturing defect and the uh, maybe the contacts were a little bit too close together uh, embedded in the plastic and just over time it uh, heated up and worked its way through. Okay, so let's see. Make sure we get it in the right uh, right direction. So it'll go like that. The data cable's on the back side, so it needs to go like that. And there are two screws that hold it in place. 
I just kind of had them a little bit loose on there just so they weren't lost. Okay. So it will kind of set in there like that. And I'll put the screws back in. Started. Yeah, there we go. All right, so these guys need to go under here, and this, let's see, looks like it needs to kind of rotate. Hmm. Might be a little bit difficult. I wonder if it's the same length. Okay, so the way it was before, it was kind of rotated the other direction, but I think that'll be okay. All right, so this guy, the power cable, needs to come over and connect there. Kind of push down that little retention clip, keep it all together. Okay, so now we need to put back on the cover. That goes over the motherboard kind of does like that and down just like that okay now put back the three screws like that and it slips into some grooves here. If I push it over it will go into the connector. A little bit of a tight fit. Okay. So it looks like the connector is slightly out of alignment. What I'm going to do is loosen these screws up so it can move a little bit. And that should allow me to Get the drive to slide over into the connector. Wow. Very tight fit. Try that again. There it goes. Now I can tighten it back down. And I will. down its retention screw. Okay. So this big thing, let's see, it needs to get put in here at the top first. Just kind of feeling, make sure it's all the way down in the front. Good, and then it should just kind of push down. And it won't go all the way in until I screw in these screws. Let's go ahead and do the, the middle one, at least partially. Okay, and then one of the sides. Should be able to see it go down as I tighten this. There we go. Looks good. Feels pretty good across the top. I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. There we go. Go back and finish this off. And then, there we go. That's back together. Oh, about this screwdriver. Uh, this is a Hitachi. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. It um, It's battery powered. It comes with two batteries and a charger, so you can swap them out. Um, whenever you tighten or loosen, the rotation speed of this is awesome. Ordinarily, to get a rotation speed this fast, you have to have one of the really large ones with the ridiculous battery sticking out. 
Um, and this one also has a clutch where you can set it to, uh, to tighten to a, a certain degree. Right now I've got it on the, uh, the least um, powerful option, number one. So what happens is whenever I tighten down a screw, instead of keeping driving the screw in and possibly stripping the thread or breaking the plastic, it will just spin uh, and not apply more force. If you want it to be more forceful, you rotate this up to a higher number and that gives you more uh, tightening and loosening force. Very nice. 60 bucks. Okay. Let me turn this over. Okay. And we'll give it power. And turn it on. And hopefully this thing will come on and boot into Windows. Let's see. Okay, I got a keyboard error. Keyboard would be helpful. But it looks like it's going to boot into Windows. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to stop there. You don't need to see my client's files. Um, so yeah, that was the, uh, the first time I've ever seen that happen. The power connector actually shorted through, burnt the plastic, and that's what was causing the drive not to be detected. Thanks for watching.